So there's a lot more pressure on at the TT. You, know, you can't you can't make a mistake. You, the way I say to people is like you go to a short circuit, you're on track for about 20, 25 minutes. But you come past that start finish line or you can pull in the pits near enough every one and a half minutes, you know what I mean? You're on track, you do a lap, it's one and a half minutes. But here, you head out, and you've got to make sure that your bike's going to get round the harshest conditions that you've ever seen for 20 minutes before you can get back and even think about changing anything, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, you've got to change your thing for TT. It's a completely different thing. We are constantly at the workshop working on the bike, really. That's what we do. We have a bit of mountain bike. We go on mountain bikes every every weekend or in the week. And they're constantly working on the bikes. It's a full-time job, to be honest with you. It's not a day off. We don't have mechanics. Well, we do have mechanics, but we don't have bikes prepared for us. So unlike superbike teams, we have to do it all ourselves. Yeah, I think I lose about half a stone the week before because I just don't want to eat. You know, just you know what you're about to. Yeah, it's a different thing. Yeah, the nerves build up just before, but when you're in it, they kind of go a little bit. But I'd say about three, four hours before any practice session or anything, then you start getting it again. Exact same. It's a uh, very nervous feeling that you can't really describe. But you're gonna, you know what you're about to do for two weeks, four full time. It's every night of the week, isn't it? So it's, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> watching on boards, that's what we're doing. We're constantly watching on boards of fast previous sidecar drivers or talking about it. It's always brought up in a barbecue or around the kitchen table or something like that. It's always, it's always there, talking. Obviously very nervous because it is, you know, especially this TT because it's been so far long away. Like the last TT we we did a few laps and coming into this one, you were not a newcomer anymore, but we were in our own heads, you know what I mean? We we only did pretty much a night of practice and then that was it. Um Yeah, the pressure's on it on the first night, yeah. Because you you are steady away anyway, because you you want to make sure everything's right, but obviously we only got to get Mike on the first lap because we had a fuel fueling issue. As it that was our plague of practice week was fueling. The pressure kept rising too much and slowing the bike down then, so. So practice didn't really go to plan for us because we were always the last ones to get out and we, unfortunately, there was a couple of red flags during practice, but um, I can't remember how many laps we actually managed. I think it was three, four, four laps we managed, I think. Three, three, three laps. But, um, so it was quite hard to go into another race unprepared again, really, because it takes a while around this place, so you mind to concentrate the speeds and the corners and how fast he's going to go. And then I need to think, well, I need to work this corner, that corner, but different 2019, and it all changed, really, all of it. When we haven't had a good start or a good practice week, it is disheartening, because every time you stop, you think you're missing out on time, valuable time. You've just got to keep a very positive head when you're going through practice week. Even if it is a, a bad week, you've still got to stay positive because it is only the practice week, and you've got a whole, you've got another week of racing left yet. So, and that's where it really counts. So that's when you've really got to have your head screwed on, ready to go. So, race day morning is it's a horrible feeling to be honest with you. It's it's horrible. Your nerves are going. You got loads of people coming around you. Uh, you're trying to make your body. To, I like to have good stuff in my body, so I will have a good breakfast and I try and plan it ahead. It, it's just, yeah, it's very difficult to get a mindset in, and it's, it's very hard to f focus. And you got so many people around you asking loads of questions, and then it's all different. Yeah, it's totally different. Well, my race day. I'm kind of the opposite, really. I wake up. It was the first time ever I woke up on race day one. And I, w I was sick, but not much. I just was sick. I, I woke up feeling sick, and then I just can't eat then. I couldn't. I didn't eat at all until the race was done. I had a banana before I went, and then after the race, I just ate. You know, it, it was all right then. Everything's gone. Then all nerves are gone. But 
yeah, that was a f bit of an experience at the sm on the way race day morning. That it's a good feeling. It's you, you know you you're nervous, but you, it just shows how much you want it, sort of thing. It's the same as anything. If you really want it, 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 the nerves, the adrenaline starts going in you. It's, yeah, that's that's what made it happen. Like it's, I knew it wasn't me feeling sick. It was just my nerves was doing it was doing it. So I knew when I went when I went to bed, I knew that something wasn't right. I think the last thing I say to him is, right, let's put a levers on. And that's that's it. Then you go up to the start line, shake each other's hand, and go. That's all you'll say to each other. Is, let's go put a levers on. When you're in the area where everybody is, and like you're all your family and friends and stuff like that, and you're all sat around the bike, and it's harder to see them. That's why it's easier just to look away from them. But then when you go through that like the no man's area where nobody is, just the bikes and your man that taps your shoulder. That's where it all starts coming, like all the nerves start going for me then, like they start disappearing, start getting really into concentrating and then, yeah, when you're actually on that line, there's no nerves then. You're literally just a timer, counting down in your head, but I'll only, I'll only count to nine, because if I count to 10, it was early, I'll shut off earlier, so count to nine, let him tap you, that's me 10, so there's no nerves then. It's, it's a different thing altogether. You, you ta start taking in the speed straight away for when you're going past St. Ninians, is that's it, then you're in it then. It's, that's the same feeling as the whole way around then, as soon as you get there. It was good because I, I knew off the laps of practice we did, my time to Glen Helen that was good, and I thought I didn't really push it there to Glen Helen in the first place, and I made a mistake. And it's like I knew then going into race one that it was going to be a good time to Glen Helen, and that's it's all about getting that extra tenth into places that makes your race easier in the long run. Because like my race, race one was that was hard, you know. It was, and the last sector from Bungalow was like, I had to push myself the next level of speed sort of thing. There was corners where I didn't even know it was going to come out. It was like, <laughs> but I had to do it because I wanted to do it because I wanted that. So it was a fight for it then. Such a good view. How physical is it there for the passenger? You can only imagine how hard Callum Crowe's been beaten up in that sidecar. I only get to see one board because my head's constantly on the platform. I've got watching on a, an onboard of me on the from the GoPro that Greenlight had on and um, I don't actually realise how much I've got my head down and how much I don't see, it's, it's mental, yeah, it's crazy. If I feel like it's climbed up Conquer Body well, it's, I feel like it's, and the bike's not done any squirming, it's, that's when I know it's, it's going good. But then when I get to Gooseneck, that's when I know it's going good because I see the pit board. I only had one pit board at TT. If you see a pit board that says you're losing time, you end up trying too hard, then you end up losing more time. As if you know that you've messed up, you can just forget about it and work on it, but then you see a board and it's like, you've not done good enough and you try again harder. And I think two boards around the TT course is all I really want. You've done a high speed section and a slow speed section. And then it's like, I, I have a marker on the, coming up out of Kronka Vody of what, if the bike wants sixth gear there, it's going well, because obviously you haven't got any speed or anything, but if it kicks into sixth there, I know it's it's pushing on there. You've done well getting out of Glen Helen to get up there to get into sixth. As if you go slower, you use more of Kronka Vody to get it into sixth, and you know that's not going as fast then. You, you're not travelling as fast on to Kronka Vody. And it's a, it's a big build up Kronka Vody, because it's all the way fast down to Kurt Michael then? No, there are certain places where if I feel him, I'll know whether he's going for, for it or not. Like, I remember on the first night of practice, we were dead steady and I, I, I said to him, what's going on here? Because I, I thought he was just going to go for it straight away, but still averaging 110, which is fast still. And he's, yeah, you know when he's going fast and when he's not. I remember on uh, race one, I was going through uh, Union Mills. I just couldn't get my head into it. I said, come on, wake up a little bit here. 
And I got to um, by the crate and I was dialed in and I was woke up. You do get a bit like I, I know where he's coming from. Where you ri like, I'll do it when riding. It's you know, like why am I doing that? And then the next lap you'll think, oh, that's all right then. You, you just feel yourself get into a, into a zone, into a position, sort of thing. You start feeling what it's doing. It was harder to doing two laps. It was harder to set the bike up as well because you, you set the bike up to take a full tank of fuel. As we were setting the bike up to take a full tank of fuel, and then we got cut down to two laps. And then the bike start you start changing changing the suspension and how much fuel you use. So you put that right amount in and works out about 11. 12 litres a lap, so you probably take off about 12k, 12, 12 and kilo off the bike to do the two laps, but then you'll also change the suspension for that then because you're not ever going to run with the full tank of fuel, so you could make the bike a little bit softer then, but then you've not rode it with that, and it's it does get, it does get a bit complicated and sometimes. And there you go, you hit the crows down this bumpy straight. We didn't have one hairy moment. I remember going over Rencorn, like so that was really, really nice, very smooth. Compared to 2019, it was a bit rough, but things like that. Well, I'll tell you what, actually, Solby straight, like that, that's bumpy now. That's like a motocross track. I felt like I was, you got a proper hang on around there now. It's not, it used to be a resting spot that you could rest your arms, but now you got to hold on as tight as you can, just to hold yourself in. We go around Curry Bends, you go, if you come onto the last right, and then there's a left kink. And as soon as, you, as soon as I feel the bike do a bit of that on my shoulder, then I'm locked in, then I lock myself in. And I'm pretty sure he has to lock himself in as well now. He's uh, to wedge me elbows against the, say so that's the edge of the fair, and you have to wedge your elbows against the fair, and hook your feet underneath the bike, and just hold yourself down. And it, it, if you're relaxed, you'd be coming up out of the seat, it's ridiculous. Pit board at, on the race one was at Gooseneck, they had one there and one at Bungalow, but the one at Bungalow was giving me Bungalow's time to see what I made from Ramsey to Bungalow. But the first lap, I seen P2 plus 17, and I thought, what, Pete must have dropped out or something and we've got 17 seconds in front of third. So I kind of relaxed it a little bit coming around and I seen on the next lap, P2, minus 17 or something, plus like one. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then I had to get going then. That's, that was, and I said to your man, when he was doing the pit board, I don't want to know. If I'm that far behind first place, I don't want to know if it's 17 seconds, because it confused me. It made me think that, you know, but it didn't, it worked out in the end, we still got second place, but that didn't help when I seen that 17. I thought it was plus 17 from, from third place, but it wasn't, it was just, it was how the gap between me and Ben Birchall. The, the Crows, Crows brothers yeah. trying to get their part, uh, way past Reeves and Russell. I always treat them how I'd like to be treated on it, if you know what I mean. I'd never, on a s short circuit, try and uh, on a road, I'd never try and sho shove up the inside of somebody or put them in a dangerous situation because it takes you to move over an extra foot and you're in a wall, aren't you? So you, you just give each other a bit of space and respect. But then there is a lot of places where passengers will give the drivers a squeeze to say he's just caught us up by a massive speed, just pull over and let him pass. It's kind of like a signal, just give him a squeeze on the ankle, move over and let the bike pass. But there is places where we overtook fairly and safely. There was nowhere I've ever not done it, if you know what I mean. I never would. We did get slowed down slightly just in the traffic of things through there because there was, you, you know we got slowed down because usually a flat out section but he was shutting off a few places but yeah, you get stuck behind traffic sometimes and it, it messes you up a little bit. That's the part of the game, isn't it, unfortunately pulling in good time on them once you can see them in that space of time, say from Ginger Hall to Ramsey. If you've got just seen them down Solby and then you're on them in Ramsey, you know you're going well because people up the front anyway aren't slow, so you know you're, you're going fast. 
My best one, I knew he was probably not going to like it, but was to overtake Molly. No, it was a bit of a dream that it's one of my heroes and then you end up overtaking him on the mountain on his on his course. It's that's a good feel that was a good feeling. It was, it was great. It, it was like Ryan said, he's such a inspiration to the sport, and what he's done for it and you know, the record he's got, seventeen wins and stuff like that. And to be able to pass him on the mountain was incredible and that one it was very good feeling, very nice. But I'm sure he like I'm sure he's in a way he liked it as well to see his neighbours come through and yeah, he, he was happy happy with us. I went and seen him straight away after the race and he was he was happy with us so and I thanked him because he, he did move out of the way for us, went up on the mountain, up uh, Feranda, I mean, Feranda. He, he he moved out of the way and let Ryan go past us. It didn't slow us down at all. As smoothly so, as yeah. possible. He's only a second between them, Crow and Bounds and Walmsley. The only thing I really don't expect the TT is lap one to lap two is Bray Hill. Like, oh, yeah. when you come across Bray Hill onto the second lap, it's so fast. It's because you've stood, stand and start down Bray Hill, and then you're only just getting sixth before you go through the bottom, but you're in sixth, come across the start finish line, and it's just like, that's the biggest bit to take in. I remember the first flying lap, I thought, wow, that's fast. But because you don't experience doing one lap of practice, you never experience that speed difference going across the line. Yeah, that's a big difference. I think lap two was just lap two, like I was saying about Bray Hill and stuff, you, you end up going that fast, you, you're carrying it around. And when I seen that, it made me go even harder. That's how we, that's how we got the lap time we did. I was just pushing it a bit harder then, because I seen the P1. Plus one second, I was like, He's either caught me up by 16 seconds on a lap or I've just read the board wrong. Probably one of the best races I've ever had in my, in my life. It was, it was awesome because I only get to see one, one board you see on the, at the gooseneck. And on the second lap, we were coming up through gooseneck and it said one second behind Pete or, or ahead of Pete Bounds. And I knew from that point on, I thought, He's going to push this now, so I'm in for a hell of a ride here. It's good, very good. I, I didn't think we'd be up at that pace with fans and stuff, this year anyway. But it just come. Every time we seen the practice sheets, it was always like, he was al I, he always did, a, he did one lap more than me, because I broke down on Kurt Michael, and he did a good time on his first lap, and then we did that lap and then he did it, and then we did his lap, and then he did another speed, and we did that speed. And that's what made me think then, it's, it's gonna be close, this. It was the last sector where, from pretty much the Craig down, I was pushing it hard around there, like, Hillbury was, Brandish was hit hard, Hillbury was hit very hard. And all round signpost, I just kept it flat out all the way, up and round signpost to the, to the roundabout there. I knew that was, had to be some time in that because I'd nowhere near that the lap before. Like the, the bike was on its edge all the way round to, I think I thought we couldn't go much faster than that round there. Coming down into Bra uh, Brandish Corner, my dad was telling me, like every time you come into Brandish, you always just roll off and then you'll think, why did I do that? And back on the gas. And I've thought that myself when I've come into Brandish a few times. When I was coming down the hill, I thought, you know what, just, just, just <laughs> and yeah, did, did just, just kept it full gas and yeah, turned it in. There was time there, and but like he said, once you've done it once, you, you'll just do that every single lap now, because you, you'll know that. It almost feels like you were wasting your time, rolling it off all the time, and you knew it could go around every time you roll off. It's like back on again. So that time I did just. It's almost like you've got to lock your wrist in and say you're not moving it, like just hold it. There's so many places, like short circuits as well, I do it. I know I can hit that flat out, so I'll just hold it flat out. My brain's telling me to roll it off, my arm's just not letting it go sort of thing. You've just got to, yeah, push it like that, yeah. But safely, not coming in, sliding and... You know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't know it would be done. It's struggled, you struggle to remember the race. It's funny because you... Yeah, it's hard to remember the race. 
it's like disappears. But you can definitely remember the good bits from it, pouring into the park for me and stuff like that. That's all the good things you can remember from it. And the crowds of people watching you going down the crag and stuff. Awesome it is. Can they nick second place? It's going to be really close. And they've done it. And they still P2 by. That is an epic performance. I broke his back. <laughs> right across the line, I always give him a little punch in the back, say well done. It's a. Uh, when you're going down, I always get the feeling when you're going down, um, just after the Craig. What is that? Brandish. What was that corner you just said? Brandish. Brandish. Through there, it's like that, you know, you're, you know you're going to hopefully bring her home and, and the feeling starts coming back. But, I was going to be happy enough of any position on that podium. Just to be on that podium was would be incredible. But second place was better than third, isn't it? So, but yeah, it's like a feeling you can't describe really. It, it's the reason why why we do it to get that feeling at the end, get the silver lady. Well, I didn't know what place we were in because I knew how close it was coming up the return road and got bruised kidneys and stuff. From Callum, and then it was only that Paul Phillips was stood with his hand out to say stop because we were waiting for the official time to come through. Then he said two, and it was like, wow, I don't think you'd get that. That's that's like, it's not first place, but it is first place in the race that me and Pete had. It's like Pete, it was either first or second out of me and Pete. It was all week, and it just that feeling was like you've come out on top. It's the only lap finish that you've been ahead of him. We did qualify second, but. He was always there, did one lap more than you, he was always ahead of you, and then you to finish in front of him was like, yeah, no, that's, that's an accomplishment done. The you can actually still count our laps on your hands. Yeah, we've only still ever done 10 laps, so I didn't actually think we'd do that speed, because that speed is very, very fast, and I, it was quite, when someone told me, it was my dad that told me straight away, he says, what, what I've just done. And um, that was the one that shocked me really, is this lap speed that we did. It was kind of blow, blow me away, that one did. But um, going back to when we were going up the return road, it, I, I knew before we got to Paul Phillips, because the crowd was telling me I, I was going three or two, and they said two, and I was like, thank God for that. Oh, it was amazing. It, it was the grandstand full of people clapping you on, and then all the team below, it was, all the hard work paid off. That's the best podium in the world, isn't it? There's no other race like it. You know, it's even just like you stood up there and you realise you're trying to bring it to reality. You're actually stood there, you're not just messing around, you're actually stood there after doing it. But yeah, it's an amazing feeling. You can see why rock stars love being rock stars, because it's what it is, and it? it's you, you've just done the best thing in the world like they do. It's all that adrenaline and stuff going on. It's, it's just next level feelings. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's massive, isn't it? It's just a massive thing. It's, it's not just a, an event anymore. It's like a, it's a life in it. You've, you've got to live it to want it. You've got to live it to win it. You can't just turn up and win it. Yeah, I think 2022 showed how big it is and how much the island actually missed it. I mean, look how busy it was. I mean. Even when we were at, around the grandstand where the beer tent was, I've never seen it so busy. I've never seen the paddock so busy either. It was crazy. But and like the fan park yeah. took a lot of the people out of the paddock, but still the paddock was full and the fan park was brimmed. You know, the people have missed it. It's the best race in the world, isn't it?